we are looking at delays. Now, thankfully, the manufacturers are doing their damnedest to circumvent these delays. And we've talked about them in uh, complete and total detail. I have detailed the hell out of this. Okay. So what's it mean for the future? I know right now that the OEs right now, they have contingencies and they have plans in order. 2014, Yamaha had a had a media event. So I'm sitting there with Scott, Scott Watkins. Watkins tells me a couple of things. First, he lays it on thick that there's a supercharged version of the VXR coming. I'm like, okay, I'm interested. Then he lays it on with me and he says, you need to know why this, why this VX exists. And I said, okay. And he says, this VX exists because of the 2008, 2009 crash. He said, we went from selling over 80,000, you know, the industry went from selling over 80,000 units a year to 29,000. And that was 2010. 29,000, I think it was 29,700, 29,800. All right, it was under 30,000 units. All right. I want you to understand this again. We went from over 80,000 units sold, new new units, in 2008 to 29,000 and a half or under 30,000 a year later. That is a meteoric collapse of the market. And when that happened, Yamaha turned to all the engineers and said, we're killing everything but one wave runner. Make the one wave runner platform to do it all. It had to replace the VX. It had to replace the FZ. And it had to replace the FX. That was the marching orders that Scott Watkins got in 2009. So they busted their ass for several years to make what they felt was the perfect hull. And what they came up with was the VX slash GP hull. All right. And they could put the SVHO engine in it. They could put the TR1 engine in it. It could do everything. And that was the plan. That was the plan. And they said, if the economy didn't pull up in 2014, we were going to kill the, the FZ, of course, because the GP. And then they were going to phase out the FX, and it was only going to be the VX. That's how the OEs are going to prepare for this. Here's my concern. I know what happens when people lose their jobs. I know what happens when suddenly food becomes very expensive. I know what happens to families' budgets when that second or third car payment is no longer tolerable for the for the family budget. What happens? They stop buying jet skis. And I watched the market from 2008 through 2014 crawl on its belly. I watched it. Every jack wagon on Facebook who say, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to have my ski. I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to ride or die. Bullshit. Because when your wallet tightens up like your sphincter, you're going to go, I ain't dropping $70 to go fart around on the lake right now. I got to put that tank in the truck so I can go to work on Monday. What's going to happen is you're going to go, I got to feed the kids. I got to make my house payment. I got to make my car payment. I got to keep my job. I don't have customers coming into my work, into my store, or calling my phone or dropping emails. Things are going to get tight. All right. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out. This clip was taken from our weekly podcast that we record here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to watch the whole video, you can go to the Watercraft Journal's YouTube channel, go to playlists, and then click on live sessions. You're going to see it there. Otherwise, Go ahead and leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. And again, thanks again for watching our videos, and we hope to see you soon.